AEW knows how to build fan anticipation before they get what they want. Because they wait until the main event before they send Hook! And then Hook got his crook in Brian Cage's machine. Have fun in seeing that. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Rampage from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Taped right after AEW Dynamite. And I'm certainly glad that AEW Rampage is back at an hour. Unlike AEW Rampage Grand Slam that had its moments, but at two hours. I understand why they did it. But seriously, a nice digestible hour of Friday Night Wrestling Television is really all that we need. There were some good moments on this show. There were some messy moments. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, please. And provided that I didn't just completely blow my voice up by saying, Hook! Yeah, uh, after Shivani said it that way, I just had to come up with a bunch of goofy ways to say it. So anyway, we do a split screen with Mark Henry, who's landed himself in a whole bunch of hot water with stuff he said, you know, along with Bully Ray about bullying and a whole bunch of that. Check out those comments if you haven't already. Mark, Hen Mark Henry kind of showing that he doesn't really, you know, understand how things have changed and stuff like that. And that maybe he should be lucky that he has a job in 2021, considering that he's really not that good of a commentator and he's really not that good of an interviewer. So anyway, we have Punk uh, and Daniel Garcia along with 2.0. And, well, hey, at least, you know, they made this they, they made this nice and easy and everything. Punk got off a few jabs. Daniel Garcia very fired up 2.0. They're bound and determined to help their guy win. And back by unpopular demand, Screaming Jericho is back on commentary. Chris Jericho, at his best, can still provide some funny snark and everything as far as being a veteran and having fun on commentary. Excalibur and Taz could call this show just fine. You could have Paul White out there if you really want to. Have Punk out there if he's not, you know, wrestling like he was in the opening match. In all honesty, Jericho is not needed on commentary. Regardless of how I personally feel about the guy... It was funny at first. It was fine at first, you know, during the pandemic era, and they were just trying to do stuff and keep themselves entertained. And then it got to where it was just Chris Old Man yells at Clouds Jericho. So anyway, Punk versus Garcia with uh, 2.0 in the corner. There were some good moments. I will say, however, even though I understand what they were trying to say, or trying to do, rather, and Punk obviously sees a lot in Garcia, and Garcia has impressed on his, you know, appearances on Dynamite, whether in six-mans or tags or and his appearances on Elevation and Dark, he has something. And he obviously has a world of ability and just needs time to grow. And can be a great addition to the AEW roster. And I've liked what him and 2.0 have done, but just something about this. <laughs> something about this just, it went on a couple minutes too long. It was good, but it went on a couple minutes too long. It kind of cut into the other match, in my personal opinion. That being said, there was more, bad than, or more good than bad here. As opposed to later on the show, when they have more bad than good. Um, he did target the knee for a while, Garcia did, that was very nice stuff, he kept wrenching it, uh, Jericho was just a fucking waste on commentary, um, Punk does fire back, but got, uh, hit with an Olympic slam, very nice maneuver by Garcia, you can tell he has a lot of really raw natural ability, Pepsi twist, you know, they actually had to call it that, you know, Punk hits that for two, sharpshooter to the ropes, he didn't do the lean back thing, because at this point, I mean, one, he's got to win with that, and that's how he's been winning matches, and two, I'm not sure Punk's back would necessarily take being wrenched in half like that, being folded up like some of my exes during their college days, and let's just move hastily on from that. He does, event, uh, after uh, Garcia bounces off of a uh, 2.0, there's, uh, you know, Punk dives outside, we get a pile driver, and then we get a vice, the anaconda vice, rather, for the victory. Punk wins, a match that went a little bit long, but... Garcia looked good, and it was certainly uh, the main highlight of the show, in my opinion. And then Shivani is there with Dante Martin, Leo Rush, and Matt Seidel, who calls Leo a junk bond salesman. This thing with Leo Rush ain't working, and they are just barely starting with it. Leo is fine as a mouthpiece. As a wrestler, he can work. I just, I don't like, I already don't like this gimmick. I'm already writing it off. That being said, I know some people are happy about it, and that's okay. This man's retired, and I'm retired more times than Terry Funk, for God's sakes. Um, but Matt Seidel says, well, if you think that, you know, you know, you're talking about all this stuff and all these, you know, resources and everything, why don't you get me a match of Punk and I'll show you how valuable I can be. So it's going to be Matt Seidel versus Punk. Okay. So then we get the acclaimed and they're doing a rap and everything. He says, you know, we uh, sent them packing faster than Ben Simmons, who's a basketball player, and then says, uh, we'll prove to like Rocky Balboa, their fake-ass champ. So, no, you don't knock Rocky, Rocky Balboa, easy for me to say, in Philadelphia. And we get the Lucha Bros with Alex Abrahantos versus the Acclaimed and their Boombox, because the Boombox comes into play a little bit later. AEW tag title match. I don't know why they bother having refs during the Lucha Bros matches. I like the Lucha Bros, don't get me wrong. I've enjoyed more of their matches than I have the Young Bucks matches. 
And they're another team where I'm like, why bother having a referee in there? Mainly because it's a corpse referee. The guy that looks like, you know, he's Adam Pierce uh, with all the blood drained out of him, if you know what I mean. Or like Billy Corgan with all the blood drained out of him, which wouldn't take all that much because man don't have much of a soul left, does he? So, moving on from that. It was a melee of moves and da-da-da-da and everything, and the Lucha Bros won with a package stomp. Okay. It wasn't bad. It was just a mess. It was just a mess, and it was... It was just da 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 back and forth, back and forth. Not a lot of psychology, but was what it was. Oh, Phoenix did dive at one point and got hit with the boom box. Not like boom clap. And let's move on to, well, we got a couple pre-tapes. One from Jade, one from, uh, well, yeah, we got from Jade, and then we hear, heard from a couple other people. We were just hearing about, you know, oh, what's going to happen with the TBS, uh, you know, Women's Championship Tournament that isn't really even being finalized yet because they're still a couple months away from moving to TBS. Jade Cargill uh, with Mark Sterling versus Sky Blue. And man, Sky has a world of potential. Jade looks like a million... And Sky's got energy and Sky's got some ability, even though she's young and it's going to take her time. Jade looks like a star. She ain't fucking ready to be on TV. Besides to stand there and everything, she ain't fucking ready to carry much of a match. It has become exposed massively. It's going to take a lot of time. Can she get there? Absolutely. But is it there yet? No. That fucking three-way last uh, last year, last, um, you know, Friday on Rampage, Rampage, sorry, it wasn't good. Jade was, like, so fucking awkward and couldn't even, it just, she wins with J -J Jade, Ed, and then Thunder Rosa comes down with a chair, and Thunder Rosa on her own is dangerous. Thunder Rosa with a chair, yeah, might as well just pack up and go home. I love Thunder Rosa. Um, that appearance right there was better than the goddamn match. Uh, nothing against Sky Blue. Plenty against Jade's ability in the ring because there really is none right now. Do not give Jade the TBS championship for the love of fucking God, don't you dare. Um, be like if, uh, you know, if TNA had given Lacey Von Erich the tag team championship. You know, Lacey Von Erich, the one that wrestled like her dad after 1986 without the prosthetic foot. So moving on from a needless shot at uh, Lacey Von Erich. Not the only time a shot was taken at a Von Erich or put on a Von Erich. Okay, let's get on to this. Rampage next Friday. Punk and Seidel. Ruby and the Bunny. And the graphics may look like Ruby wanted to lick the bunny. I'm going to move on from that image that I'm going to have nesting in my head for a while. The Inner Circle, Sammy, Hagar, and uh, Jericho versus the Men of the Year and Dos Santos with... Uh, Magaval, whatever the hell his name is, I can never pronounce his name, and uh, the sheepish lion Dan Lambert in their corner. And then Dynamite on Saturday the 16th, so no Dynamite on Wednesday. Adjust your cocks accordingly, and adjust your clocks. Adjust whatever. Adjust the hands on your cocks accordingly. So Dante Martin versus Malachi Black. Malachi Lucha Bros versus a team uh, that's close friends with Andrade El Oleolio for the AAA Tag Team Championship. Who are they? Laredo Kid and somebody. I don't goddamn know. La Rebellion from uh, the NWA. They're, they're the current NWA Tag Team Champions. Have them win it. I don't fucking know who it's going to be. Who do you think it's going to be? I don't know much about AAA. So anyway, Danielson versus Bobby Fish. Pure technique. That should be fine. AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament bracket will be announced. Um, I was asked... And uh, other people were asking on Twitter, and one uh, other person asked me in Messenger, why would they be doing a world title eliminator already? Because Paige just got, um, you know, the poker chip. More like Cowboy Chip. Missed the opportunity to say that joke on Dynamite. I think what's going to happen is Paige is obviously locked in to face off against Omega at full gear. He's going to win, and then whoever wins that world title eliminator tournament will face off against Paige. They'll lose, but Paige will get a nice win, and that person will, you know, they'll have a good story built and everything to get back to the title for the future. Maybe MJF wins and then he loses to Paige. Or maybe they have Paige hold the championship for like a few weeks and then MJF beats him just to close out the goddamn year and the crowd's throwing trash in the ring. They will throw trash in the ring when MJF wins the title. That's 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 how good MJF is. <laughs> so we then get uh, Brian Cage versus Ricky Starks and it's a Philly street fight. For the FTW Championship. Remember that championship that meant fuck and all in ECW? Yeah, it's still here. Somehow. And I love Starks. Starks tried to make this work. Cage can do some athletic shit. He can, despite the fact that he looks like the Michelin Man, you know, with a whole bunch of muscles and everything. And look, I understand what they were trying to do. I haven't cared about this feud. Starks got messed up a couple times. The weapon spots were awkward. There was a trash can spot, you know, um... 
It was an inside out for <clears throat> on the can for two. And Taz is all upset, and he sends out uh, first before Hobbs, he sends out Hook! And Hook comes down there with the Smurf Village on his goddamn head, and he gets knocked away pretty easily. And then Hobbs comes in or whatever, but this is not the last we've seen of Hook! I'm going to keep just saying that because it's just funny. And then Starks is bleeding, by the way. And at one point, man, just, just, just friggin' Hook. He got, he got his arm just right up there in um, Brian Cage's machine, just repeatedly stroking that machine off and everything. Noah, you, stop thinking about it. I know you're thinking about it. And then Starks gets the victory with Rochambeau. And that's it. It's really it right there. I'm glad Starks won. The championship doesn't mean anything, but it is, it is what it is. It, it's an hour of television. At least it was over quickly, but... Some of the show wasn't that great. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.